Economics Nobel Prize goes to green growth theorists. The Nobel Prize in Economics has been awarded jointly to two academics for championing the importance of the ideas economy and climate change. The pair are regarded as leading figures in the creation of so-called green growth economic models based on sustainable expansion. William Nordos, a professor at Yale University, and Paul Romer, of New York University's Stern School of Business, will receive a cash prize of $1 million for their work. The choice of winners was announced on the same day the UN released a report in which it said, a major transformation of the global economy was needed to avert disaster caused by climate change and that time was running out. Mr. Nordos and Mr. Romer were described by the judges of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences as having significantly broadened the scope of economic analysis by constructing models that explain how the market economy interacts with nature and knowledge. The pair offered a significant step towards answering the question of how to achieve sustained and sustainable global economic growth. The judges said, unlike other Nobel Prizes, which have been given out since 1901, the economics gong has only been awarded since 1968. It is technically known as the Sturgis Ricks Bank Prize in Economic Sciences, in memory of Alfred Nobel. Mr. Nordell's research looks at how imposing carbon taxes in all countries could slow climate change. While Mr. Romer's endogenous growth theory looks at the difference between how goods and ideas operate within an economy and how these distinctions can inform ideal market conditions for knowledge. He believes tackling global warming does not have to come at the expense of pursing prosperity. One of the problems with the current situation is that many people think that dealing with protecting the environment will be so costly and so hard that they will ignore the problem and deny it exists. He said, I hope the prize will help people see humans are capable of amazing accomplishments when we try to do something. Mr. Romer was chief economist at the World Bank but left in January after just two years in the role after coming under fire for suggesting the political motivations of the bank's staff may have affected its closely watched doing business report, which ranks countries according to the ease of doing business there. I took Brexit as a serious warning. To Paul Romer, this year's cow winner of the Nobel Prize winner for economics with William Nordos, the Brexit vote was a warning for economists. Answering a question from Yahoo Finance about how economists can get their voices and potentially transformative ideas back into in policymaking, Romer expressed distress about the credibility economists currently have, perhaps best illustrated, by the Brexit vote. Part of the Brexit vote was people saying, if all the economists are for it, I'm against it, said Romer, a professor at NY Eastern and director of the school's urbanization project. I took Brexit as a serious warning about why economists have lost our legitimacy. Had we overstepped in promoting value judgments over facts, the question was a rhetorical one without a concrete answer, but Romer made it clear that economists should stick to the facts. There is a phase that I'm afraid may come across as politically charged, and I don't mean it that way. You're entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. He said, and this really is the essence of what science can do. People will make different value judgments, they'll have different preferences and priorities. But what science can do is provide a statement of the facts. Romer didn't have any answers to how economic ideas from research can reach policy, but he did express optimism that this commitment to the facts could accomplish a lot. The Nobel winner pointed to people's opinion of college as an example of how facts can sway people's opinions. Today, he said, many surveys show people who think an education is a waste of time, and hotbeds of liberal views. But if you just show people, here's how much your average earnings go up if you get a degree, that fact actually changed minds. Romer said, they didn't realize that while you may not like the optics of some places, the university is a transformative place for young people. With this approach, Romer said, we will have done our jobs. The stakes for economists, academics, and researchers to reclaim their place in policymaking runs through Romer's work. One of Romer's most important ideas is that technology does not simply fall out of the sky, but rather is born of intent.
and often from an environment that fosters and prompts new ideas, if necessity is the mother of invention. Rumor might posit that while necessity may be a motivating factor, good policy and investment is the real parent. The U.S. government does not invest in technology in the same way it once did, for example, in the era of Sputnik in the 1950s. I've been really disappointed that we just haven't had the kind of political environment where we can think about speeding up technological progress and doing something as bold as we did when said, hey, let's invent computer science. Said Romer, in an early period in the United States we invented chemical engineering. I've been a little disappointed that the government hasn't been able to take the lead on anything in tech policy. To Romer, the government can play a decisive and crucial role of facilitating PhDs, research, innovation, and other educational investment that can unlock real long-term growth for economies. Ideas, he said, far more than monetary policy, have the biggest bearing on the future.